thank you for joining us. We've got about 45 to 50 minutes uh, of me talking. There'll be part of um, a question and answer piece either throughout or, or at the end. Um, I'll give you an introduction to myself. My name's Russell, Russell Dethridge. I work as a solution lead at LHH in the leadership development part of the business. And I've been doing so for nearly seven years, seven years in December of this year. However, before that, I was working in lots of organizations in similar roles. And so I've been working as a leadership coach and mentor and facilitator full time for about 23 years. Before that, I worked for Travelers Insurance, um, which is an American organization in Connecticut. Before that, I worked for lots of different organizations in the call and contact center industry. And before that, I was an actor. So um, I've done lots and lots of things in my 59 years on the planet. So um, please feel free um, to ask any questions. There's a question and answer uh, option available. But let me talk you through today's session. So Rebecca, if we can bring up the slides, that would be great. And they're just coming up. So we'll just go to the start, the first slide. Just whiz through these, we were just having a check. So what we're talking about today is how LHH have designed a solution to some of those challenges that we find new managers face themselves. When I first became a manager um, was about 30 years ago, 1993, and it happened really because I was good at doing one thing. So the company I worked for then stopped me doing that and put me into another position, managing, but without any training, without any support. And it was okay, but when I look back at it, there were some avoidable mistakes I made. If that organization had just spent a bit of time talking me through and supporting me with some of the basics and maybe some of the advanced steps that could help me connect with others. And I remember reading at the time, it is so common for people to have what's known as the accidental manager experience. I think I was an accidental manager. I was good at doing one thing, good at outbound sales, so on and so forth. I didn't know if I was any good at leadership and management. And I think sadly that has continued ever since. If we go to the next slide, you can see some of the research that LHH has um, collated over the past few years um, relating to first-time managers. Are they really set up for success? So you can see there, so we've got the, um, the uh, references for where these statistics come from, CEB, Oracle, and our DA, LHH Disconnected Leaders Research. So 60% of managers underperform in their first two years. And I look at my experience and I think, I'd certainly be in one of those 60%. 43% of employees were not satisfied with their managers. So that's from our disconnected leaders research. 64% of workers would trust, this is fascinating, would trust a robot, AI, more than their managers. And 67% of employees don't believe they get due recognition for their work. Now, I believe that with care, with support, and with coaching, these statistics can change for us. I'd like to go on to the next uh, slide now for us. So let me give you an overview of our solution. We've got a simple, effective, flexible program that achieves maximum impact for your first time managers. So first of all, we've got the assessment and the debrief. Um, at LHH, I've always been proud of the fact that as part of the support that we give people, we give them kind of, we hold up a mirror to them from when they're starting and then maybe compare that mirror from when they've finished their learning journey. So it gives insight for them into themselves and for you. It provides insights for self-discovery, creates clarity on where to focus attention, and so on. So we've got that assessment and debrief as part of this program. 
We've then got a number of workshops. There's probably 16 or so overall workshops in the four stages, which I'll come to in just a moment. But they don't have to, and you as, uh, as organising this, don't have to select all 16. You can select two, maybe three from each section, but I'll come to those in a bit more detail. So the workshop topics align with your challenges and needs. So we're not saying this is kind of an absolute, everybody go through the same piece. You as um, the commissioners can select which of those modules are going to be the most appropriate for the business challenges that your organization and those first time leaders face. So participants will develop and practice the required skills within a peer group. It's a hybrid program. It can work face-to-face -face and it can also work virtually. So the face-to-face the -face sessions are about three and a half hours and the virtual sessions, V-I-L-T as we call them, are two hours. Bear in mind kind of the different needs on a virtual session. It is self-paced. I think this is really important in come 21st century learning that people draw down on what they need and make sense of it within the workplace as well. Participants can have access to the digital learning campus for the duration of the programme. That's where other articles and other materials are curated um, and they create a collaborative community where they can share videos, articles and so on. And because they've got real time access to those uh, materials, they can step in and out of that library whenever they think it is right for them. Now, really key are the facilitated group, group reflection moments. I think the older I've got and the more experienced I've got, I see this, these are the major stepping stones between the classroom uh, piece and applying things in the workplace. So here, these facilitated sessions build a community of leaders. It creates a safe space to share ideas and applies learning in a practical way. And also it helps people, um, Joanne, I've just got your uh, question about location. I'll come back to that in just one moment. And it allows people to have a moment where they can reflect and hold each other to account. And I think this is what is powerful about um, group coaching is that we can say, if I say two weeks before, yes, I'm going to try this out, and then I then I don't. It's it's a powerful group piece that prevents that happening. I always feel like we are kind of connected if we make um, uh, commitments to each other in that space. And then finally, well, not finally at all, but it's kind of the, the thing on the right at the moment, we have with our partner company, Ezra, the opportunity to have one-to-one -one coaching if you think that would be appropriate. Um, so you have a deeper development dive based on uh, whatever the participant or yourself have selected with our uh, coaches, real coaches um, that uh, we can find for you, usually working in a digital way. Now, the question I've got in the Q&A is face-to-face um, -face workshop, in which locations in the world would those be available and in which language? Um, as a global organization, LHH, we operate throughout the world. The details for which we could give you uh, after this session. Um, we operate in all the kind of major European languages and so on. Um, again, we'll be able to furnish you with the complete range of um, languages a little bit later. So I hope that Joanna begins to answer your question. So let me just go to the next slide. And by the way, please feel free to answer, uh, ask any questions you like. So now let me talk you through the kind of Harry, uh, Harriet, Harriet Pretty, if you want to take yourself off mute, if you can, or pop a question in the box. I'm not sure if the uh, being able to speak has been allowed. But if you pop your question into the Q&A, Harriet, that would be great. Or you can put it into chat and I'll try and find it. Okay, so what we'll do, just want to send a message to someone. Okay, so if we now work through what a typical 
program might look like. You can see it's broken down into four areas, four areas of interest. The first one is self. So looking at the individual as a newly promoted leader or manager. Then we've got others. So when we're looking at the team in particular, the team that they're taking over, then the organization. So what are the organization's um, overall uh, capabilities and uh, ambitions? And then performance, how we bring everything together. You can see, as I indicated earlier on, there's the assessment at the beginning and the assessment and debrief at the end. And the, all of the sessions are held together by those facilitated group reflection moments. But um, be great, Rebecca, if you could bring up the content for the first point. You can see there. So the workshop options, um, in person or virtual. The first one, which we'll be taking an in-depth look at, is stepping into leadership. What does it mean to move from that solo contributor into working with others and leading others? But also, next module as well, is leading with resilience, starting um, to look at how we look after ourselves. I think, certainly in my experience, stepping into leadership can be so tiring to begin with because you're looking after so many things. Starting with success, how do we look at what success looks like and how can we, we be really flexible in what we are um, trying to do? Um, questions, by the way, the q and I'll try and answer right towards the end. If we go now to the others segment, so if we let's go in here, Again, we've got four modules aligning for success, so how we bring the team together. Really important, we've noticed since the pandemic, igniting lasting trust, particularly when working virtually. And I've just come from a session on exactly this next point, developing through feedback, where we look at um, what we mean by feedback, how we have those first conversations, which newer managers, people who are less experienced, can often find difficult. Feedback can mistakenly be seen as criticism or chastisement. And as we all know, it's much more than that. Driving accountable coaching, so we drill in from, based on feedback, how we look at coaching and the difference between training, mentoring and coaching as well. In the organisation section, if we just reveal that, Rebecca, that would be great. We've got three modules here. So navigating change, what does that look like? Communicating with impact, the two go very much together. You know, the, the power of change is often to do with the power of communication and understanding. And then an interesting topic, making conflict work. So that might sound odd, why would I want conflict? It's something that is inevitable, even in high performing teams. And we have found, and certainly in my experience all over the world, have found that if we can harness and look at conflict correctly as a productive piece rather than a toxic piece, it can actually help a team to grow. And then finally, in performance, the final column, um, empowering people. So how we delegate, how we give them their space looking at maximizing people's time. And that's not only looking at some straightforward time management techniques, which are really important, but also looking at maximizing people's use of energy as well. And finally, building psychological safety, where people are comfortable in sharing ideas, comfortable with coming up with their own solutions to certain things, knowing that their ideas won't be ridiculed. So this is the arc of the learning. I'm just gonna take a look, quick look at the, um, some questions we've been asked. Really interesting question that I've been asked privately. We have issues um, with the line management of people dropping out of courses when they've due to workload I think that's that can be common it is I will always tell you the truth it is not something we see particularly in the courses that we lead at LHH because we work with you to make sure that first of all you're selecting the right candidates to come on to the program secondly those candidates themselves understand completely the, co the commitment they need to give and crucially their line managers understand that as well and clear the space 
for them to attend. So um, a, a program that I've just finished um, delivering for one cohort, we had, apart from one illness, which is okay, we had 100% turnout of about 15 people in the cohort over a period of six months, because we'd ensured that all people, all stakeholders knew the importance of attend attending. Um, we build the programs into your business as usual. So many of the case studies we'll look at and many of the challenges that we discuss are what people are dealing with anyway. It's not an academic exercise. It's a very pragmatic exercise that links what people are doing with what we are covering. So business as usual, yeah, you could go in and deal with that, but you'll be able to deal with it better if first you attend these sessions. We also like to keep them quite punchy and, and um, interactive. Unlike today when I'm doing a lot of the speaking, uh, we'll be handing over kind of the interactivity to the attendees. The next question we've got as well just here is, is it too late for managers who've been in situ for a year but are struggling with the jump to management? No, not at all. Um, if they've been in a year plus, I think the people, managers at all levels, particularly people who haven't had that formal uh, training, even if they've been in situ for some time, can stop and as uh, Stephen Covey um, famously identified stop and sharpen the saw. They can uh, stop what they're doing immediately and just look at how they are doing it. So no, I think people one year plus if they're that what they bring is kind of examples of, of pragmatic examples that they're finding. Okay, so I'll return to um, some of the questions in just a moment. But now what I'd like to do is if we take down the slides, Rebecca, can you bring up the poll for us, please? And I'd like you to uh, we'll step it, look at step into leadership in just a moment. But if we can bring up the poll, in fact, I can do it. Yeah, there's the poll in front of you. Um, this is completely anonymous. So what I'd like you to do is answer this question based in on uh, what we do at the moment. Are your new managers set up for success? Thank you. And while people are doing that, I'll take a look at other questions we've got as well. Um, we've got a person uh, asking about how they get in enrolled in the entire piece. Um, for that person, I'll come back to you on that just towards the end. Um, interesting, someone has asked a question, would this be suitable for aspiring managers or only those in place. It can be suitable for both. Um, I've worked with people who are thinking about moving into leadership or management positions and covering some of the topics we've covered, we cover here. Actually, they get that, yes, this is absolutely for me, or I needed to have a, a longer think about this. So for the person asking that question, it is suitable for both. Let me just that we have to change certain things in terms of what their experiences are, but we can quite easily do that. So I think we've got about 79% of people who've responded and we've got a kind of an, an even curve. Many people are saying it's a bit patchy in terms of uh, being set up for success. We've got uh, some percentage saying, yes, we've got to cover this entirely, and some saying, no, we don't. So there's an interesting bell curve that most of the way you voted is somewhere in the middles. Yes, but there are gaps. It's patchy, just fundamentals. So if we take that idea of it's patchy, what you can see here with the four columns that we've got and the 17 or 18 modules from which you can choose, hopefully that patchiness is diluted if you can do such a thing and it becomes much more of a firmer platform on which we can build. Now talking of building, what I'd ask you to do now is become a first-time manager. Imagine in your head you either go back to or if you're attending and you are a first-time manager um, you can remain yourself. I just want you to, to think back to the time when you were a first-time manager and we're going to look at, I'll give you a couple of modules. Um, we'll go into a bit of greater depth. We're going to start with step into leadership. So, Rebecca, if we go to the first piece. Oops. 
So if we go to the next slide, if we just go back one. So just have a bit of fun. What book or movie does your journey to management remind you of and why? This is, these next few slides are taken from that stepping into leadership module, that, that first one we start with. So we try to make it kind of relaxing as we move into this, but it's a real proper question. Um, if you think about your journey to management to the time you became a first time uh, manager, what book or movie does your journey to management remind you of and why? You can pop that in. The chat. And somebody's asked me just while we are thinking about that, is there a space during the programme to unpack the manager's role in creating the work, the right work environment? Yes, there is. That's um, the immediate module that I spring to mind is the um, aligning teams for success, but it features in a number of the modules as well, where you're looking at the culture that uh, a line manager wants to create within the overall climate of the organization. Yeah, I've, as you make a, a great uh, point there, often this is where all the good people management intentions break down when everybody's drowning in admin and processes and no one's looking at that and helping resolve. So you've got that aligning teams for success, but also other areas where we look at teams and what how we want to, to work together. So absolutely, Tanya, that's in there. So in the chat, We've got the sliding doors, uh, 100 years of solitude. This is great. We've got some Avatar, the Barbie movie, big, cast away. And the, the reason we start off like this is just to get people relaxed and, and building that community of learning. And then we talk about that for a little while and let me just, and keep those coming. But just for today, I'll move to the next slide. So Rebecca, if we can go to the next slide, that would be great. And then we talk about this. Often with first time managers, or even people, as somebody mentioned, who've been in a management leadership position for some time, people are often holding a lifetime of assumptions about authority, power, and being the boss. I'm not sure what quite what's re required of me. I've ended up in this position and I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to do. I know the fundamentals, but actually, what does this mean? So we address this early on. So we challenge our assumptions. So if we go to the next slide, you can see we may not be able to do this um, on with such a large audience. But I'd like you to just reflect on this. If this were face to face, I'd have it on a in their workbook and we'd be discussing it. If this is on screen, they'd be marking up on the, the slide. For today's large audience though, I shall keep it just to you reflecting. So key tasks of a manager. We have a myth and reality column. So a key task of a manager is a myth. It keeps things running smoothly. A key task of a manager, a myth perhaps, managing each individual, each employee individually. Is it a myth that what you want from employees is a control or compliance? Is it a myth that the manager's source of power is formal authority? How many uh, stripes we've got on our arm? And is it a myth that to build credibility, we must always demonstrate superior technical skills? So... Uh, Louise have put a cross to all. Yeah, so do you agree or not agree? Absolutely. So we start this debate. One thing I love about um, the LHH content and, and I think philosophy is what we encourage people to do is to have an opinion on what they are doing without becoming opinionated so that they decide the sort of leader they want to be and how that needs to flex in certain situations. So if we look at the reality, and this, again, if we had longer, if you've got a three hour session or a two hour session, so if we just press the next uh, button, Rebecca, you can see the reality that comes forward. If we can do that, you can see there, the myth is the things that are in the gray box, but the reality are some of the things we've got in the purple box, making changes that make the team perform better building a culture that enables the group's potential, 
which speaks to that point that somebody asked in the question and answer piece just earlier on. What you want from employees is not compliance through control, but commitment. We've just worked with a client in, in this sphere where we've spent a lot of time on looking at voluntary commitment, looking at what it means, what work means in the workplace for people. And I think with new generations coming into the workforce at the moment, the idea of meaning at work, commitment, is hugely important. The manager's source of power isn't only formal authority that can be used sparingly and very selectively, but through earned credibility, respect, trust and influence. It's why we ask one of the first questions we ask is, what are your key values as a leader? How does this show up in the workplace? How to build um, credibility through character, judgment and an ability to get things done. So using this kind of discussion piece, the way we run the sessions is very much a facilitated approach. So let's move to the next slide. And again, thinking um, as you were thinking earlier on about your journey to leadership, we talk about a paradox. I'm very interested in LHH, are very interested in this idea of leadership and management being a paradox. You've got two speeds as a manager, as, and this can come as a bit of a shock to new first time managers. Speed one to manage, operate, deal with complexity, do things right, execute, implement, measure, enable, organize, monitor, and so on, focus on the ground level, tactical, and seek order, consistency, and efficiency. All of those, yes, we know we agree with. The session I've just come from um, was a debate around this balance, this paradox. I've got this to do, but I've also got to lead and speed to innovate, deal with change. Instead of do things right, do the right things, change and innovate. Being creative within the work environment is huge. It's something that has always been there, but really kicked in during the pandemic. To inspire, align, motivate and influence focus on the high level strategic, the future and the long term and seek change, novelty, effectiveness and movement. And this is true for leaders at any level. When I first left college in 1985, I don't think first time managers or more junior managers would be required to think creatively or have an insight into strategy. But now they do. 40 years later, now we do. Um, and Louise, thank you very much for putting that in the chat. Yeah from doing the right things uh, to do the right things is not only doing things right. Yes, that's important, but having that kind of almost moral or values driven perspective is important as well. Okay, I'm just I'm done. Oh yes, absolutely. There's, somebody's asked anonymously, I didn't see any diversity inclusion content. It is covered. I can't remember off the top of my head which modules it is covered in, but that's certainly part of the, the things that we look at. So I'm just checking on time and keep these questions coming. And Rebecca, if we can go to the next slide, please, that would be great. So now I'm giving you a taste of that first module, stepping into to leadership. We've had this debate about kind of uh, presumptions that we have about leadership, working under certain assumptions and so on. But how then, Russell, do I make this step? How do I make the transition? So let's look at sort of three key considerations. So on to the next slide, we have this build. So first of all, you've got the anatomy of transition, letting go of the past. And this is really key. I remember the, a big mistake I made in my first managerial position is not letting go of the past, trying to do everything, admit and celebrate that an era of your career is over. You're moving perhaps from a solo contributor to leading teams. Then moving, take a note of what has been lost, but also what has been gained. It's not just kind of the accidental manager piece, but a gentle move of gears into the next stage of people's career. Live in the present. You're a beginner. Allow yourself to be in transition. You don't need to know all the answers right at the start. However, what we do um, require is a commitment to learning and finding support, seeking information and connecting to people and resources. So asking for that help. 
as I mentioned before, don't rush to be seen as an expert or feel like one. This is a discussion we have. It can be quite lonely to move into leadership for the, for the first time, thinking you need to know everything. So leaning on people is important. Connecting your values to your values for direction. This is something I think has become increasingly more important over the last, the last 10 or 15 years. Values-led leadership understanding the authentic self. I remember having this kind of di discussion on authenticity um, in other sessions at LHH and people saying, yes, I know I'm authentic. And then when you start to ask people to unpack that, sometimes they don't know what they're being authentic to. So in this module and throughout all the modules, we're looking at that idea of authentic leadership. So we're letting go of the past, living in the present. And now if we look at the final a uh, block building block jumping to the into the new so committing to improving and also being on that constant learning loop being self-aware and seek feedback from your own managers from peers and from your employees and setting goals celebrate your small wins as well as your larger successes the the small w's and the big w's as well so this section in that three, three hour if it's face to face, two hour if it's virtual point is really crucial. This anatomy of letting go, celebrating the past, living in the present, understanding what's required of you in order to see a new way that you will operate. So just before we move on to the final slides, just if we just go back a bit, any questions just about some of the content I've talked about here? So we can put it into the Q&A. Um, somebody's asked me as well, what's the difference between the Accountable Manager Program from LHH? There's, there's a couple of differences. I think there you had, first of all, you had three key columns. Um, and the modules there, this is the key, key piece, the modules there were set. You will do X, Y, and Z. You will do A, B, and C, so on and so forth. Here, we can work with you to select the at least two for each section modules that fit with what your needs are. So it's much more kind of client driven rather than this is this is what it is. In terms of the content, there is some overlap of content, but only thematically. This is more now, this is about being the leader that the organization wants people to be, certainly, which sits with the accountable manager part, but also the leader that the individual knows that they can be. So there's much more reflective rather than instructional piece. Let's see if um, we've got. So a great one from uh, Natasha there. I totally agree. I had to let go of the past and now I live in the, live in the now and finding things have so improved my performance and my team. Just looking at this. A couple of questions coming in. Let me just take this down so I can answer from the hoof. So yeah, diversity inclusion. Oh, Tanya, your point there, what opportunity will the new managers have to bring and discuss their specific issues and challenges they are struggling with relating to each of the modules? Um, from memory, I think all of the modules require pre-course work and part of that pre-course work is bring your own examples, bring what you, you are feeling or you are experiencing in this particular um, forum, in this particular, for this particular topic. The next module that we'll look at is um, in relation to change. So that's really key. Uh, we can talk in abstract about change. Yeah, that's great. But looking at a live change that people are leading or managing other people through is really important. So yeah, it's one of the, again, another reason I like working with LHH is entirely because it is hugely pragmatic. We can have case studies that we can kickstart ideas with. If people go, oh, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Okay, let's look at this case study. Then somebody usually comes up with, well, this reminds me very much of what I'm dealing with here. So going back to your point, Tanya, absolutely. The whole predicate, the whole philosophy of LHH's leadership development is predicated on people bringing their case studies we can and their their real experience Let's see if i've got anything else 
Yeah, so Olivia asks, how do you make the content apply? Do you provide exercises require people to bring certain examples? So yes, there's part of the pre-course work, but also at the end of a module, the facilitator will say, you know we're meeting up for our group coaching session in X amount of weeks. What I'd like you to bring back to that is an example of where you've applied authentic leadership, where you've delivered some feedback. How did that go? You can anonymize it, but that's another power of those group coaching sessions, those accountability sessions. So yeah, the it's checking in with what people have done. I often, you know, that that group learning that that people have, I think is based on the fact that we share what's worked well, what's been okay, and what hasn't worked. And my job or my colleagues' job as facilitators is to help people through that process as well. Okay. So um, Debaraj uh, said there, how do you help learners create personal accountability that impacts the men momentum of growth positively? Partly to do with the peer group coaching so that they are part of that. We can look at pairing people up with others for peer-to-peer -peer coaching. But also, um, they will be keeping diaries, they will be keeping notes of things and uh, how they've progressed as well. Another part of it is we can bring in line managers to say, okay, so you've got John who's going on this course and he will check in with his line manager after every session or every a period between sessions and so on so that they hold themselves to account. So it's not kind of, oh, I had half a day here and it was really nice and we had a good chat about this. There's absolutely a point where we are looking at measuring or they are measuring themselves and holding themselves accountable for what they're putting into, into place. Okay, just aware of time. So we've got about uh, 39 minutes past the hour. Rebecca, if we go to the next slide, that would be great. So I thought now we'd look at, because um, you've got so many modules here, the next uh, module is navigating change. So we've had one moment where we've looked at stepping into leadership. And next, if we go forward to the next, um, uh, moment, Rebecca is navigating the change. So this is what we're looking at now, just to give you a flavour. So as I mentioned anecdotally a few minutes ago, there's quite a bit of prep work for this. We try not to make it too onerous. We don't want to add things to people, uh, people's inbox. However, this is important that they just give 15, 20 minutes beforehand, just thinking about a change that they're looking at. So if we go to the next slide, that would be great. Um, I can see other questions coming in in the q and I'll come back to those in a moment. One of the exercises we look at is the reality of today. We're going through change after change after change. And sometimes we can become both as line managers, but also as employees. Um, we can become, I suppose, change fatigued and just worn out by it. So the start of the discussion on change is accepting the reality of change is now almost constant. Yet, how do we de deal with this? So in the next slide, you can see what we then get people to, to look at. So what you may see, so we try and give people an insight. And by the way, in the, in, the, um, in the change module, we'll discuss early on some of the change challenges that they are having, and they share with them, anonymized, of course, share with them, with each other, some of the change challenges they face. And that then leads out into looking at what behaviors or what emotions people may see. So above the yellow line, we talk through some positive emotions. So on the top left, you've got the, in the purple, segment people can be energized they can be committed accepting optimistic and curious we really try to make the point that change doesn't always lead to negative things it can lead to very positive emotions and productive behaviors such as advocacy people performing at a higher level they're developing in particular ways they're being they're considering new options and they're exploring ways to bring those options to life there are of course less positive areas. So negative emotions such as maybe indifferent to the change, being concerned and confused by it. Sometimes people are stressed out and may be overwhelmed. How do you recognize some of those things if you're a first-time manager? Um, 
It might be that some people are ignoring the change altogether or quite hesitant about it, beginning to put their toe in the water. Maybe they're unfocused because they're so confused and because they're stressed, they're struggling with it as well. And that paralysis that can come to us all when we're overwhelmed by either a single change or a multiple change. But what do we actually do? So if I'm a participant here going, Russell, that's great. I understand all of that. I can recognize it, but help me. So we engage in that debate and we draw that debate to a close with the next slide. So if we take a look at the next piece, here are some top tips and we work through these. We don't just put, put them up here like we're doing this afternoon. We work through these to look at actually how they show up in reality. So if somebody's committed on the positive and uh, end of the scale, reinforcement ideas for the leaders is to provide feedback coach, provide insights and ideas. For the less uh, productive end, so maybe correcting, just moving people back on, on beam, reframe the change, reassure people who are concerned. For people who are confused, how we help them to focus, how we can spread, spread support if people are stressed and so on, or if they're overwhelmed, how you give them that gentle but firm direction. And again, we can then start looking at either a case study we have or more usually the examples that people have brought in. So do you have anybody you see in your group who are stressed out by this, these number of changes? How can you use a supportive approach to help them? What does that actually look like? And again, as people asked earlier, how do we kind of put that into the workplace? The facilitator would then say is, OK, in a couple of weeks time, we're having our catch up session. You said you're going to give some support to X, Y and Z we'll take time to reflect on that when we meet up. And if we go to the next slide, so accelerating change acceptance and reducing resistance, we look at the what, why, and how of change. So creating awareness, best to use to reframe misunderstanding or perceived or actual drawbacks. Why starts to build commitment so we can deal with that indifference of that kind of denial factor um, or perceived or actual drawback um, that people are stepping back to similar to the first stage and how before it provides the clarity. So diluting that misunderstanding as well. Okay, so into the final part, the slide. Another reason I both joined and stayed within LHH is that that pragmatism actually translates itself into things people can hold and things people can do. So we're not expecting people to kind of write everything down and make their notes and go off. We give people planning sheets. I've used the one here for, for change, but these occur throughout the, the module. So people can say, okay, so I've got somebody who's finding the particular changes we're going through really quite challenging. If I want to have the most productive conversation with that person as possible, how do I prepare for it? And how do I help them understand it? So you can see here an individual conversation roadmap for a line manager to have, brand new line manager, with one individual or a number of individuals. So we ask them to think about understanding the change, what specific change or part of the change is impacting this individual. Identify the stage. We look at a change curve and there's four or five stages there. What stage or stages are people operating at this particular person? What observations, discussions or knowledge of exhibited behaviours that led you to this conclusion? How do you know people are, are operating at kind of that um, denial phase or uh, where people are feeling kind of um, disorientated as well? And preparing for the conversation. What's your objective? What can or will you do in preparation? How will you engage the employee based on what's in it for them? Which leader actions do you want to exhibit? What will you do? So we do as much as possible to prepare for them for that conversation. It isn't a script, but it's a group, a set of speaking notes. And I use this merely as an example of things that we run throughout all of the modules. So you'll know that your attendees are not only getting the interaction and the conversations, but also a, a toolkit that they can turn to and use as many times as they like faced with some of their, bit of their leadership challenges. 
And finally, I think what I wanted to do is to just bring us a final thought. And I use this as a theme that brings all of the content we've got here together. It's a theme that holds this first time manager program together. And we'll go to the next slide of the person reflecting. A final thought, this is something that we ask the facilitators to ask the teams when they're coming to the end of the, the journey. It's very easy if we bring up the first, the next piece, uh, Rebecca, it's very easy to become a human doing when you're in any situation of leadership, but particularly when you are new to that, that role. So I'm just doing, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing. And we forget where we started, which is stepping into leadership, the human being part of who we are. So what we ask people to do at the end of the session, or maybe throughout, is the next question if we bring up on the slide, and that is, what sort of leader will you be? Will you be one that develops people who think strategically is looking at the long term, at the same time can keep on completing what is required of today? Or will you be more of that doing, just keeping up on that kind of very squeal, keep it going round and round and round without looking towards the future and the wider context? Naturally, we want people to be human beings in their role. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. So we've had plenty of questions. I hope I've answered some of them. Just in terms of the logistics on the next slide, it's a bit dense. The next slide we've got here looks at how we measure impacts. So you can see there, and we'll send you a copy of the, the deck or an edited copy of the deck that we've got here. We've, we're very careful in the way we measure so you know you're getting the best return on investment as possible. So you've got your levels one to four in terms of Kirkpatrick. What part, what do people think about the immediate uh, impact? What did participants learn retain? So self-reporting a bit later. What changed as a result of the learning? Did participants integrate the learning into roles? And then what impact did we have overall on the organization? So this is part of I was going to say behind the scenes. I think it's more than that, but it's not something that we go into during the program itself, but it supports the program so that you can report back on the changes that people are making and the impact that's having on the business. So I think that's what I wanted to share with you. It's about 10 to the hour now. And if we take down the slides, I've just got a time now, five or 10 minutes for any questions. So if you want to ask me anything we want. Okay, so I've got uh, an anonymous question here. How can organizations support delegates with technical knowledge, for example, um, ER, HR policies and procedures? We have a strong behavioral development offer, but find managers who know little about the above have a dip in confidence. Well, there's a, there's a couple of ways uh, we can do that. You can either host those sessions before the behavioral piece, if you were to go with LHH and have a deeper dive into those hosted by your your own HR experts or whoever you think is appropriate. Or what we could do is if you brief us on them, if to use a program like the LHH first time managers piece, we could slot those in. I think a, a really valuable approach would be to say, OK, here's some behavioral pieces about HR discussions. Maybe I'll use an obvious one, a disciplinary. So these are the behavioural things that you as a first time manager would need to think about. This is how it shows up. These are some of the policies, how it shows up in your um, in your world. So that's kind of some of the things that we would recommend there. So hopefully that's. OK, so somebody's asked me a question. Um, rough costs, if I can leave that to another point, because I think that would be based on the sort of solution that you select. The size of the training group, again, that can depend. I think something like this between 15 to 20 would be the maximum, um, but we could work with you on that. Duration of the whole programme, again, it's, it's kind of, well, it's it's whatever you want it to be, but genuinely, I think it, it, it's got to be more than about six weeks. If you've got six weeks, cram all that in. You wouldn't have the reflection time and so on. 
for a program like this, if you're getting longer than about six months, it might get a bit too long, a bit too stretched out. We could still do it. I think an ideal arc for this sort of program is between four and six months. So around about five months, because you've got those periods between sessions where people can reflect, try things out, and then come back. Um, time zones for the virtual sessions, again, we'd, we do our best to, to work with you on that so there's a, a time when everybody can join. Sometimes, and this would affect the cost as well, sometimes you might have time zones where we'd have to run kind of maybe two, or you might want to have two cohorts in different time zones. Um, somebody else have, uh, has asked about the cost. We can send those um, details out afterwards. I, I, it's usually based on the sort of program that you choose. So I'd rather not kind of give a, a live version of that just now. Sorry to, to duck that question, but I think it's best um, answered in that way. How long is the duration of the course and how many sessions are there? Um, as I said, four to five, four to six months would be my ideal, but we can work with you on that. The sessions in the, the modules, usually we recommend you have at least two in those four columns, but you might want to go for all of them. So that's really down to you. Of course, that changes the price impact. Um, so you'd have two, four, six, eight plus three coach check-in sessions. So you'd have 11 plus a launch session. So there'd be about 12 if you were to go for the minimum. And I think that's it. Okay, I've got another couple of chats. Yes, um, Julia, in the uh, in the regular chat, it can be both face to face and it can be virtual, uh, Julia. So that it's it's very flexible in that way, or it can be a hybrid. You might have one or two that are face to face and one or two that are are virtual as well. Okay, I think I've got another question here. So do, you, do I think Tanya, if I understand the question correctly, do you do we map across kind of which leader skip skills or behaviors and and which mo modules um, compare with those? Um, I don't have one in this deck. We can certainly look to see uh, where those things match and match across, but it's something if you want to get in touch with us, we can start to talk about as well. Okay, so if there are no other questions, um, please keep those questions coming. I'll stay for the next six minutes or so until one o'clock in the UK time. Um, we will be sharing the information with you. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, let me just go and find what I want to find. Please keep those questions coming though just while I find this. just opening it up and say, uh, for more information, let me just pop this into the regular chat. So this will go into the regular chat. If you want to give us a call on, let me just put this to everyone. This is our call to action. So the telephone number, UK number is 0208 3966 3524. And the email address is UKSD at LHH.com. So I'll just stay on here for the next five minutes or so. Um, I just remind you that the programs, we can flex around you, but they are built on that pragmatism that people can apply their learning immediately in the workplace. So thank you very much. I wish you a tremendous Tuesday afternoon and hope to speak to you very, very soon.